this is the first video in a, in a number of videos where I'll be looking at um, transporting plants. Uh, this first video, as you can see, is to do with the root and stem structure. Um, it's vital you understand the, uh, the structure of the root and the stem in order to understand how um, the plant transports um, substances. Um, so this video um, will look through various diagrams uh, and various structures and um, at the end we'll uh, we'll have a look at some WJEC questions um, on these two uh, two topics. So uh, the first um, first one then um, uh, root and stem structure. Okay, so the uh, the upper diagrams there are microscope images of um, a root and a stem. Uh, the one here on the left is of a root and uh, the one on the right uh, is of a stem. Uh, so you need to be able to identify various structures from microscope images and you also have to be able to draw um, and label um, structures through a stem and a root and, and that's what I've got drawn underneath uh, the microscope images. Uh, so we'll come to those drawings in a moment. Okay, let's do the root first. Um, okay, the uh, various parts then. Uh, if we look here, the right by that red arrow there is the uh, epidermis. Uh, it's the outermost layer um, of the root and um, we are going to look at the cells that make up that layer uh, in a moment because you may be asked to draw one. So that's the uh, epidermis uh, layer. If we go from the epidermis uh, all the way across uh, to there, uh, what that blue arrow represents uh, is the cortex and the cells that are in that cortex region are called parenchyma cells. Um, I've got all of these labelled in the diagram below, so I won't bother labelling them uh, on this diagram at the moment. Uh, so that's the cortex region made up of uh, parenchyma cells. Okay, a uh, little bit difficult to see on this diagram. So where that green arrow is, uh, like I say, it's very difficult to see, uh, but that is the endodermal layer, and um, it's got little bits there in red. Okay, so some of the cells uh, have stained red. Now again, uh, just like the epidermis, we're going to have to look at the structure of one of those cells that make up uh, the endodermis. And in fact, there's a reason why it's stained red and it's because there's a, a deposit of a special waterproofing substance there that we'll discuss later. Uh, so that's the uh, um, endodermal layer arrowed in green. Um, that endodermal layer really marks the point uh, where all of the um, tubes and vessels of the plant are located. So this whole structure here, which I've bracketed in uh, green, is called the vascular bundle. Okay, and within that vascular bundle you can see that there are some structures. So the sort of X-shaped... So that region in green there is known as the vascular bundle. Um, Within it, uh, we've got the uh, xylem vessel, which is this uh, X-shaped structure, okay? Um, and in between uh, the xylem vessels, uh, we've got the phloem vessel in those locations there. Okay, uh, so that's the basic structure. There is one more layer of cells uh, I want to talk about, but I'll uh, uh, look at those in the diagram below. Okay, so in this bottom diagram then, that's what I've drawn out. Um, this is something that you should be able to do in an exam. Um, all of the labellings are there that I've mentioned uh, a moment ago. Um, plus now this additional layer, which is in pink. Uh, this is a layer of cells 
that is located just under the endodermis and uh, it's called the pericycle uh, layer. Okay, uh, so that's the root structure. If we go over to the stem now, if we look at the microscope image at the top, uh, the major difference is uh, to do with the vascular bundles. Uh, the vascular bundles are now located around the outside of uh, the stem, whereas in the root they were actually sort of centrally, centrally located in the middle. So uh, we still have um, an epidermis, which is the outer layer, okay, which is this layer here now, and right next to it we got these vascular bundles. And again, the vascular bundle will have both a xylem and a phloem uh, in it. Um, you can see that the, the actual xylem vessel is sort of within or pointing inwards, but the phloem vessel is sort of uh, pointing outwards. It's nearer the cortex, basically, and the uh, epidermis. So as a diagram then underneath we can see very straightforward uh, we've got the vascular bundle here um, and within the vascular bundle there's a phloem uh, pointing outwards and then the xylem uh, directly underneath it. So that's the basic structure of the root and the stem. Uh, we're now going to go on and look at um, the detailed structure of the cells of this um, epidermis layer and also the cells found within the endodermal layer. Okay, so um, we're going to start off with the uh, epidermal cells. On the left we have a microscope image. Okay, um, these cells here that I just put sort of red marks in, they're the uh, epidermal cells. So they're the outermost layer. These would be in contact with the soil. Okay. And the important thing about these epidermal cells is that they have these long structures uh, protruding out of them. Now they're called root hairs. Okay. And this gives the other name of this epidermal layer, which is sometimes called epi um, root hair cells. Okay. Um, over on the right hand side, uh, this is a basic diagram of what um, an epidermal cell looks like with the root hair uh, coming out. Uh, you need to be able to draw um, this type of cell, including the root hair um, coming out of it as well. So it's a pretty straightforward uh, diagram there. Okay, lastly to do with the um, uh, detailed structure of some cells is to do with the cells of the endodermis. Um, so the microscope image on the right, you can see again, uh, we have the endodermal layer marked by the green arrow. And uh, what I've shown on the left hand side is uh, a basic diagram of the structure of the cells that make up that endodermal layer. Okay, so the first um, cell I've got is a, is a 3D uh, representation of the cell. Okay, and the important feature of these endodermal cells is this thing called the Casparian strip. Okay, now the Casparian strip is what makes the endodermal cells look a little bit pink or reddish on the microscope image. Okay, uh, they stain sort of red under the microscope. So this Casparian strip what it does is that it uh, it's it's made up of a substance called subarin okay which is a waterproof substance and it's deposited within the cell wall of the endodermal cell and it sort of wraps around the cell much like uh, like a belt right the way around it so that green line that i'm highlighting now is the casparian strip um, which is made of subarin, it's deposited within the cell wall of the endodermal cells and it goes all the way around. As a 2D cell, uh, you can see that we have the cell wall clearly shown in this diagram and right at the top there we've got this um, green boxed region at the top and the bottom which is the uh, Casparian uh, strip again. Okay. Um, 
so we'll uh, we'll look at the sort of function of that uh, Casparian strip a bit later. Uh, but this is another type of cell that you may be asked to draw uh, and indeed identify in microscope images. So the next um, structural aspect of this topic is really to look at the uh, the detailed structure of these xylem vessels, uh, which are uh, again shown in in red here on this microscope image. Okay, so we need to look at the the structure of those vessels as well as their functions. Okay, so the xylem vessels um, are the vessels that transport water uh, within the plant. And uh, under the microscope, uh, in a bit more detail, uh, the xylem vessels have this sort of appearance. Um, the patterns that you can see on these vessels are due to the depositing of another waterproofing substance. Uh, in this case, it's called lignin. Okay. Um, if you remember, the um, endodermis has a layer of subarin. Uh, that's also a waterproofing layer, but in the xylem, um, the waterproofing material is lignin, okay? And this lignin actually forms various patterns uh, within the xylem vessel. So if we have a look at the diagram on the left, what we have are lots of long xylem vessel tubes. They're sort of running diagonally uh, in this image, okay? So if I mark a dot there, that represents one xylem vessel, the other red dot there is another xylem vessel, okay. So every where there's a red dot represents a xylem vessel, which sort of runs diagonally up along uh, the image there. Okay, um, so these patterns within the xylem vessel are actually the lignin, and this laying down of the lignin is called secondary thickening and it forms these various patterns uh, which are actually shown a bit clearer on the diagram on the right hand side. Um, it's a highlighted view of the xylem vessels <clears throat> where you can clearly see now the um, secondary thickening occurring um, in the vessels. Okay, so if I put um, a blue dot there, you can see that that's one xylem vessel. This is another one. That's another one. And there's one just on the end there. So if we look at the uh, first xylem vessel, number one, uh, you can see that there's rather a lot of red staining there. That's because there's a lot of lignin that's been laid down within the cell wall of the xylem vessel. Uh, this is often known as reticulate thickening, um, but where you've got every red region represents the lignin and every light region, uh, as there, uh, represents uh, a pit where there's actually no thickening um, there, there's actually no lignin there. So this is called a reticulate thickening. Um, the next one along then, number two, um, this one... Um, to me, it looks like an annular one. I think it looks like rings going around it. Okay, you can see that there's less um, lignin within that vessel. Okay, because there's there's actually more white regions than red. Um, number three, then that's another type of thickening. Uh, this one would be a spiral thickening because the lignin spirals down. Um, so wherever the red is, again, you've actually got the lignin. And on number four, this is another type of thickening called annular thickening, where you have rings. And if I just draw there, you can see that uh, there are rings occurring around the xylem vessel. So that's uh, that's the major thing to know about the xylem, is that it's got this secondary thickening. Um, you get the laying down of lignin within the cell wall. Um, when that happens, it actually kills the xylem. So the xylems are dead vessels, they're non-living. And the lignin there is to waterproof the xylem, 
because it does transport water so it needs to be waterproofed and the lignin also strengthens the xylem vessels and that's something I'll talk about when we look at water transport uh, through the plant. So that's the uh, xylem vessels. Um, the next things we need to look at is the phloem vessel um, which has a very different um, structure to the xylem and also a very different function as well. So the phloem uh, vessel then, um, unlike the xylem, the phloem vessel is actually a living um, tissue, a living tube. And um, we certainly need to look at the structure of uh, the phloem vessel. And here's one uh, representation of what the uh, flow and vessel looks like. So there's quite a lot to discuss in this uh, diagram. So we'll go through it uh, step by step. Um, if we have a look at this region here, which is called the sieve element, okay, uh, that is really what the flow and vessel is made up of. It's made up of a series of sieve elements. Uh, sometimes they're called sieve tube elements. Um, but what they are, they represent the cells of the phloem that join together to form this tube along which uh, substances are transported. So um, basically, wherever you have a sieve tube joining to another sieve tube, you get this formation of a sieve plate. Okay, so that's quite an important structure within the phloem vessel um, and it's it's something you may need to uh, identify in, a, in an exam question. So there's your sieve plate and that marks the joining together of two uh, sieve elements. Okay, so the other thing to notice about the flow and vessel which again is made up of sieve elements is it's got a rather thin layer uh, or cytoplasm um, around the outside of the uh, sieve uh, element. Um, the reason why the cytoplasm is pushed against the edges of the sieve element is that the phloem is there to transport substances so you do need um, a lumen as such for things to transport along it. Now what this rather narrow lumen, uh, sorry what this uh, narrow cytoplasm uh, creates is really um, a lack of space for organelles really. So you can see that within this cytoplasm there are uh, some organelles um, but you don't really get the full complement of organelles within um, the sieve tube uh, elements. And what that means is is that Without these organelles, the, the, the sieve tubes uh, and the sieve tube elements, sorry, can't really survive. They can't live. Um, uh, they even have, haven't even got a nucleus, so that really is a problem um, for a cell not, uh, not living. So what is associated with each um, sieve tube element is a cell called a companion cell. Okay, so along... Uh, the side of each uh, sieve element is a companion cell and if you look inside these companion cells they have a full complement of organelles, they have a nucleus here, um, they have uh, chloroplasts, they have rough endoplasmic reticulum, they have smooth endoplasmic reticulum, they have a Golgi body there, uh, even a mitochondria. So what these companion cells do um, is that they produce all the various uh, substances that are needed to keep the sieve elements alive. So they will produce the ATP required for them to, to survive, the various proteins um, that are needed uh, to keep the flow and vessel alive. Uh, so that's something that may be asked in an exam question and we'll, we'll look at one of those uh, at the end of this video. Um, the other aspect that um, we just need to look at is that there is a plasmodesmata uh, joining the uh, sieve element to the uh, companion cells as well. So that's another uh, organelle. 
So that's one view um, of the um, structure of the flow and vessel. Uh, in an exam, you may get different views of these um, tissues. So if we have a look at this slide, uh, we've got two diagrams here, both representing the flow and vessel made up of the sieve tube elements and also the companion cells. So if we have a look at the diagram on the left, what you can see is uh, this structure here that's labelled end wall, uh, that's actually the sieve plate, okay, because you can see that there are little pores within the sieve plate. And again, that marks the, the joining of the two sieve elements together. Uh, the interesting thing in this diagram is the actual companion cell. You can see that the companion cell is kind of sandwiched between uh, two flow and vessels. Uh, and um, th th this is a diagram or, or a similar diagram to this has been used in past paper questions where you can see the companion cell sandwiched between um, the flow and vessels. So that's another view. Um, the one on the right hand side here, again, is very similar, okay, but you can see um, here is the uh, sieve plate, okay, and you have the pores within the sieve plate. Therefore, this sort of orange region here represents uh, the flow and vessel, which again is made up of sieve uh, elements. And Next to the actual sieve element is your companion cell here, all right, which again provides all the required substances for the phloem to survive. Um, so that's the uh, structure of the phloem vessel done. We've looked at all the plant structures uh, we need to for this plant transport uh, section. So what we're going to look at now are several past paper questions. Some of them are quite recent and a couple are quite old, but they're all questions now that test you on these aspects that we've gone through in this video. Okay, so we're going to look at these um, uh, structure questions now in relation to plant tissues. Uh, the first question is uh, from January uh, 2013, so quite recent. So what you can see is um, it's a transverse section um, through a root, okay, it's actually of a buttercup in this case. Uh, so this diagram here is, um, I suppose, a more magnified view of the one that uh, I showed you earlier on in the video. Um, so what you have to do here is label um, the various parts, A, B, C and D. Okay, so if I take you through these parts, um, first off, uh, if I just point out that this region here, this circular region, that's going to be the vascular bundle, which is centrally located within the root. Um, the other thing I want to point out um, is this layer here, okay, which I'm highlighting, that's the endodermis, and you can see that uh, you've got this sort of dark grey um, thickening on there. Well, that's going to be the Casparian strip again within that um, uh, within those cells. Uh, this is a black and white image, of course. The one I've showed you was in colour, so th those thickened grey regions would have been in uh, pinkish colour earlier on. So that region is the endodermis. Um, the central bit there is the vascular bundle. Within the vascular bundle, of course, you've got the xylem vessels, which are these uh, bits here that make this sort of X-shaped structure. And in between, we have the phloem vessels as well. Okay, so basically then, B is going to be the endodermis. C is going to be uh, the xylem vessel. D is going to be the phloem, which leaves A. Uh, now, A is actually pointing to an individual cell here. So there's two potential answers allowed for this um, uh, structure. You could have said it's the uh, parenchyma cell, or you could have said it was the cortex, because all of these cells here 
are the parenchyma cells of the cortex. Okay, so A is either cortex or parenchyma. So I just typed uh, the uh, answers in uh, to those letters. And uh, if we scroll on down to the next part of the question, okay. Um, part B then, name the tissue shown in the photomicrograph above, which is strengthened with lignin. Okay, well, of course, the lignin uh, is a component of the xylem vessel. Okay, so C uh, would have this uh, thickening of lignin or is strengthened by the lignin. And again, uh, you can see if we look at this individual xylem vessel, I've put a, a red dot in, you can see that it's got this thick border to it. Well, that's the actual lignin being deposited within the cell wall. Okay. Um, the next one then, name the tissue which has sieve tubes. Uh, well, that's going to be the phloem vessel. Okay, they're made up of uh, sieve tubes. Okay, so the next one now is looking at the, the functions um, of number one, the sieve tube cells. Okay, so we're going to look at the functions of the sieve tubes in detail in uh, the next video. Uh, but for this question, really, the function is the transport of sucrose. Uh, they would have allowed transport of amino acids. Uh, that's often called translocation. Okay, so the transport of, of sucrose uh, or amino acids within the sieve tubes is called translocation. All right, so that's the function of those. Uh, the companion cells, uh, we've mentioned that earlier on about the function. Really, they're there to provide uh, the ATP and uh, the proteins and all the other substances needed to keep um, the flow and vessel or the sieve tubes alive. Okay, so I've just added those answers in to the um, last two questions so um, if we move on uh, to the next question then uh, which is from June 2012 uh, very similar um, diagram here we've got a really zoomed in high magnification of the vascular bundle okay so this gives me good opportunity again to sort of highlight various features so I just arrowed there um, the or one single endodermal cell you can see that it's got that thick grey layer. That's going to be the Casparian strip made of uh, suberin. Okay. Um, again, A is going to be the xylem vessels. B is going to be uh, the phloem. And obviously now C is labelled. That's the uh, endodermis. So the first question then is name tissue A and explain its role in the plant. Uh, so I've said A is going to be the xylem. Uh, its role in the plant is for the transport of water. Okay, nothing else. Transport of water. Okay, um, part two then. Name tissue B and explain its role in the plant. Well, tissue B is going to be the phloem. And um, again, that's, that's really for the translocation or the transport of sucrose. Okay. Uh, part three, their name cells C, well, they're the endodermal cells, or they would have allowed the endodermis. So I've just typed in the answers to those uh, final parts of this question. Um, there's one more part now to this question, and it's uh, to draw a simplified longitudinal section of cell C, clearly labeling the special feature of this cell. Okay, so um, cell C, of course, is the endodermal cells, and um, I drew those earlier, so I'm going to just paste that uh, diagram in in a minute. So there's the um, endodermal cells that I showed you earlier. Now, for this question, I think I think it would be okay to do I either do a 3D or a 2D. Uh, diagram of it, as long as you clearly show uh, the Casparian strip um, deposited in the cell wall uh, in the 2D version, or if you do in the 3D version, you can clearly see the Casparian strip uh, running around uh, the endodermal cell. So um, that should be a nice, easy two marks to finish uh, that question off. 
So this question now is from June 2009. Um, this one is uh, showing a part of the stem, okay? And um, it's trying to draw it in sort of three uh, dimensions. So let me take you through it. Uh, if we look at um, vessel A, um, you can see um, there are several vessel A's along there so they go along there and um, you can see that they've each got this sort of funny patterning uh, within them now that's going to be the secondary thickening that I mentioned earlier um, that secondary thickening of course is made up of lignin all right so A is actually going to be uh, the xylem vessel if we go over to B then um, B the easy way to figure out what B is, is to look at this structure here. Okay, that's going to be the sieve plate. So B now is going to be uh, the sieve tube, which again forms this flow and vessel, which uh, uh, travels all the way down there. Okay, uh, C, now that's going to be the companion cell because it's sort of sandwiched in between the uh, two sieve tubes there. Okay, so this, this diagram is similar to the ones I've shown previously uh, in this video. Okay, uh, so there's the actual um, cells that uh, are found within this um, drawing. And we need to know the function of each now. Well, again, we've already looked at the functions of these. Uh, so quickly, uh, the xylem vessel, which is A, uh, that's going to transport water. Uh, the sieve tube element, which is B, that's going to be the translocation of sucrose. And um, cell C, companion cell, that's going to provide um, or supply the sieve tubes with things like ATP and proteins uh, in order for them to function properly. So um, I won't bother typing in the answers to that one because it's pretty much... The, similar to what we've already done. Uh, this is just a nice diagram uh, for you to be familiar with, uh, showing the xylem and the phloem sort of all um, lined up together there. Okay, we're just going to look quickly at two more questions. Uh, this question is quite an old question, but again, it's still relevant. Um, it's uh, showing or telling you that it's a transverse section of a root of a dicotyledonous plant. Okay, and on the diagram you need to label the endodermis. Okay, so if you remember now, the endodermis is going to be that region there. Okay, so it's that band of cells there. Okay, so that would be the endodermis. Uh, complete the diagram by drawing and labelling the xylem and phloem vessels. Well, uh, the xylem are going to be, uh, and the phloem are going to be within this region here, which is the uh, vascular bundle. Okay, um, I'll draw that in in a moment. Lastly, it's saying, in the space below, draw a diagram of a single cell from the endodermis of a young root. Okay, again, we've done that. Okay, it's the endodermis, you need to draw that cell uh, showing the Casparian strip. Um, I'm not going to bother answering part two here because that's going to be um, a part of another video where we look at the actual transport of water uh, through the plant. So again, just very quickly with that question, um, it, uh, it builds on previous questions we've just done really. Okay, last question then. Um, this one is looking at uh, various different types of cells uh, from the, the plant. Um, the first two should be quite obvious. A, that's going to be um, a sieve tube element. Okay, you can see that because that there represents the sieve plate this is sort of looking at the flow and vessels from above uh, this one here is looking at a longitudinal section so a would be a sieve tube uh, b i think that's pretty straightforward you can see the 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 secondary thickening in the xylem vessel there this this thickening here is the annular one with the rings this one here is the spiral one 
okay we know the functions it's asking you to identify the cells and give the functions well we've already done that several times um, so moving on this one we haven't uh, discussed these yet these are guard cells um, that really comes under the uh, the structure of the leaf so I haven't talked about guard cells in this video okay uh, but the guard cells are there they form part of the stomata and they um, they actually open and close the stomatal pore which is this region here okay um, lastly uh, this last cell now is an endodermal cell where you have the Casparian strip in black going around the cell that's the 3d version of it okay and over here is the 2d um, version which I've um, drawn out previously again the function really of this endodermal cell we'll look at uh, in the water transport video so uh, that was pretty quick fire through those questions but it's a topic that I think is pretty straightforward looking at the um, structure um, and function of the various cells and tissues within the plant this knowledge is essential for you to understand how the plant transports water and transports uh, sugars which are going to be the um, content of the next uh, two videos uh, we'll have a separate video on phloem transport and a separate video on xylem transport